Okay, my uh, computer says it's 5 p.m., so I'm going to call the meeting to order. So I guess we'll launch into it. Um, since we're not doing a public hearing, um, I had thought we would talk a little bit about prep for town meeting. Um, I think one of the things I do want to talk about related to preparing for town meeting is just since we're to get us all on a call and talk about the um, kind of what we've learned since our last meeting about the aquifer protection district with the understanding that nothing is changing, you know, for town meeting, but I just wanted to have a little conversation around that. And I think I also was expecting at tonight's meeting, we might talk about talking points for a town meeting, but I'll tell you, and I don't know about others, I, I, I was looking at the booklet and I saw Judy had sent around a link to it. I kind of think that the summary that Brian wrote of the three planning board articles and not the one about the limited marijuana protection uh, production, but those three, those capsule summaries were great. And I was almost thinking, re reconsidering whether we really should or needed to say anything at all and just go back to letting, the, letting them read off the warrant articles and being available to take questions. So those are kind of the two preparations for town meeting topics that I had. I agree 100% about letting the, the write-up do the talking for us. As we ended up last summer having a lot more verbiage out there than we really needed. It certainly doubled the length of town meeting. <laughs> I mean, I think the issues last year were more complicated and this year it seems very straightforward. Um, so yeah, I would, be, I would be fine with not being proactive and I'm happy to just let the town, because I think I talked to Brian and he might've, but anyway, we can just let the town moderator know we're not going to make any remarks in advance and just ask, you know, answer questions if they come up. Yep. Sounds good. So let's talk a little bit about the aquifer protection district piece, because there is just this one thing that I thought we ought to talk about together and then sort of be prepared to address if it comes up during town meeting, which it may if given I gather Dan Dennehy you know, communicated not just with us, but with the select board and the select board have this question. So I'll say that when we were all working on the protection district bylaw, the revisions to eliminate the water district. And Judy brought up the point about the boundaries. I have to somewhat with some embarrassment say that I really didn't quite understand the point at the time. And then triggered by Dan's email and subsequent things, I started looking into it. It's almost like what was a little pre-meeting chit chat, like these issues get, there's sometimes a lot more than meets the eye on these technical topics. Um, so what I've learned since, we've left the four, the two zone twos and the two zone three boundaries unchanged on the zoning map that's going to be voted at town meeting. I think that's the right, I was uncertain for a while, but I think that's the right course of action for town meeting. And well, I think your research proved we wouldn't be able to change them if we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just don't have the, the necessary documentation. Oh, and by the way, I'd invited Nicholas to join us tonight. Um, it's his birthday tonight. So he, <laughs> I, I said there'd be cake, but it would be virtual cake. So he's doing something a little more fun than a planning board meeting. I don't know what's more fun than a planning board meeting, but um, so happy birthday, Nicholas, but he can't be here tonight. So I've been corresponding with him a little bit on this topic. I guess maybe I just to be, try to be more succinct than I typically am. I kind of wanted to put out there that maybe we should all commit to as a standing item. And I'm happy to sort of drive the research and data gathering and all of this 
moving forward because now that I've gotten my head into the aquifer protection bylaw and source water assessment program reports from the DEP, I'm, I'm, I've kind of gotten a little hooked on it. So I feel like I want to see it to the conclusion. See what retirement does to a person. I know it's sad, I guess. Anyway, um, <laughs> so what I don't believe, I, I saw Judy may have made a comment in email about we might need to get a study done. I don't actually think it's going to come to that. What I- okay, I misread your memo then, because I thought that's what you were yeah, implying. What I got, and again, Excuse maybe- Excuse me, I'm, could, could I just say I'm a little lost here? Okay, <laughs> all right. So I, I, I think all you need to say is we're talking about next steps. Yes. On, on evaluating the aquifer protection district. No right. details. And okay, what well, well yes. and clarifying, all the details. The, clarifying the data. I think that's yeah. that's all you need I to think say. I'd summarize for the minutes as follows, Mary, that the planning board discussed its revisions to the aquifer protection district bylaw and intends in the coming months to reevaluate the the boundaries of the districts and consider whether um, removing protections in some areas may have merit. Just really want to heavily hedge that. Okay, so it, it intends to the, this, discuss its revisions for the aquifer protection. Yep. With the intent That's of right. possibly Intends, intends to possibly reevaluate the, the, the boundaries of the districts. Okay. Because if that were to come up at town meeting, I guess we may, and, and I, I had corresponded with Dan before I was a little more clued into all of this. And he, you know, I, I may have left him with the impression, well, I couldn't speak for us as a body, of course, anyway. Um, but I, I may have left him with the impression that from the planning board's perspective, it was done. We were just going to you, you know, the boundaries were going to remain unchanged indefinitely. And I think it would be more appropriate and actually the right thing to do to just state, we don't necessarily believe that it, it may be the right um, move for the town to not change the boundaries, but some more work and some more research is needed before we can make that, that decision. Thank you. What I don't wanna have happen at town meeting is anyone to make a motion that's successful to like table the, the vote on the zoning map because they don't like the boundaries of the zoning districts. I really want that. There's so much good about that zoning map. I think the, it, it really needs to get approved. That makes sense? Yeah. So well, I think in order to do that, Dan would have to propose propose, or someone would have to propose an amendment to the first part of the section to the to the zoning wording itself before we get to the map. Right. Once 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 you've approved the wording, then the map will stand because it reflects the wording you just approved. And Dan, of course, wouldn't know to do that. I mean, oh yes, he if, would, and that's that's what I. Okay. Of course, yeah. he would. Dan. He, he at least you know him better than I do. He described himself in email as not very knowledgeable about zoning bylaws. Dan's nickname is the mayor. <laughs> oh, Dan, gosh, Dan, gosh. Dan has watched every meeting recorded that ever probably was. And we'll watch this recording. So, Dan, I respect you. <laughs> Um, you know, um, but yeah, I really just felt like I learned something. The fact that he raised the question and then it was discussed by the select board just made me want to dig into it a little bit more. And I think simply saying, no, we're going to, we, we are going to look into it is, is the right thing to do. It needs to be done in talking yeah. to Nicholas, as I think I shared with you, he was of the opinion that, and again, just the opinion. And right now, I consider all of this hearsay, hearsay and nothing we can act on yet because of the opinion that the zone three 
that was added to the map to, for the water district could be removed, but that the zone two for the district actually um, encompasses part of the zone three for the water department. And so figuring, finding the right boundary is what needs to be done. Now, well, one, go ahead, go ahead, Don. One of the things we need to keep in, in mind is that there is no, if we take zone three out, there is no protection for the people who don't have and can't get town water or anything well, like that's, that. That's a, part of, that's a part of the analysis, I think, Don. Yeah. Yeah, but, but Dan, Brian's point to me was that we don't protect private wells broadly across the town. So why we would don't we don't always do start with with a, an existing area that protects it and take it away? So you you have some liability either way. I think I, it's not as clear as that. All right, so that's an interesting twist. So again, those are um, the things. And another that... thing in your research, did you find out why Zone One and the intermediate wellhead protection area are not on the map? Because that's a question I don't think we can answer. And the, it's what I was told is that, and Nicholas showed me a map. They are such small areas. I mean, they're like 400 some odd feet around the wellheads that it, it really doesn't. Well, for, well, there, he, he gave me two answers. One was they're kind of too small to be worth putting on a, a map. Two, the IWPAs in the zone ones, and this is stated. I don't know if it's stated in our zoning bylaw, but it's stated in the state regulation is that the land where the zone one and the IWPAs exist must be controlled by, I think, owned by the water supply operator. So I think his argument to me, Nicholas, was that, well, it's town owned land, so there's no from a zoning perspective, it, nobody cares. Well, the, the problem with that is that, that there is a manure collection pile less than 200 yards away from the wellhead. That Nicholas and I have looked at off and on more than once. Okay. This is for the district or the department? This district doesn't exist, so right. it's well, for the department. But that was pre-existing. Right, but it's being added to. Uh, I think it might just be easier to say that nobody on the board was around when this decision, when the map was drawn. And they're very small anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because only it's only the district ones that are going. Right. Well, it was my my understanding when I first learned about this is that that well was was in the deep aquifer, and I've been disabused of that. It's in the shallow aquifer, and to me that makes a difference. Well, the the manure pile it's it's the DEP regulation that that uh, Nicholas got the town to put in there just a couple of years ago. It's a requirement of the DEP. Yeah. Whether irrespective of whatever, but okay. Okay, let's move on then. Yeah, I, I think that's that's really all there is to I've it. Got, I've got a dead horse in my living room here. Okay. All right. Um, Can we go back to the DMCTC? Uh, yes. Something? Because they're going to present it, but I suppose if somebody asks for planning board comments, I was going to suggest that. Um, rather than have one person do it, it might be better to have somebody who was for give the positive arguments and somebody who was against give the negative ones. But do it basically as residents versus speaking for the board. Well, so we could say these, whoever is doing it could say the board was split or was divided. These were the positive 
arguments that came up, these were the negative arguments that came up. Um, I mean, that's that's in the report, there's nothing, and they, they were all covered in the meeting, so there's nothing new there, but I doubt that, any, but that a lot of people are gonna sit and read that whole report. It would be nice if they did. It was very helpful that, that Brian put it in there. Yeah. I, I'm fine with that, I had thought. So I would be, I'd be happy. That's only if there are questions. Yes, right. Because I was, I was trying to decide even for myself whether I might be inclined to take off my planning board hat and simply speak as a town resident on that or not. Um, well, that's an option too. But if we wanted to agree that say, um, there would be one member of the board to speak for the, you know, the four arguments and another for the, the not the against arguments that would also work, but also, yeah. And I have to say, I've been all over on this, whether, because I can't say I feel too strongly about it. Um, and maybe the right, maybe, well, I think we did the right thing and sort of leaving it to the rest of the town to decide what their position is. So I, I, I don't know, I, I'm sorry, Judy, I, I guess I, I sort of feel like. I know how you feel now, I haven't heard from anybody else. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Tom won't be there, so. Well, you know, it's, is it bringing too much attention to this issue again? At the end of the day, it's one, one company making a, a small proposal. Um, it's, it's not representing, it's not a town-wide issue where there's, it, it needs a, a lot of research. It's, it's so specific to this organization and their process that I wonder if we're bringing too much attention to it. Well, this is just how we handle if there are questions, not not what we bring up. Yeah. If if somebody says, why did the board give no opinion? Well, maybe I've never heard anybody ask why no opinion. So and the report is there. So maybe that's the thing we yeah, we just hang out and if, never mind. And if a question comes up. Then we might do it as you initially outlined, Judy, where one of us sure. might speak to the for and the other to the against. Yeah, or or individuals could get up and give their arguments. Okay. We do still the same thing, probably. <laughs> okay. So I think that's good. I think we can be done with the preparations for town meeting. So I guess the next one is sort of mine too. Um, and this might link availability for discussion of the housing production plan because Megan Rhodes has emailed Judy and I and given us some dates. But um, maybe as we consider availability of discussion of the housing production plan, let me bring up an additional item not anticipated. And that is, the request, we got an email request to the planning board from Keith Bardwell uh, to do a joint tree hearing. And Keith has written that he needs to have this hearing. He says he's going to be away on vacation returning on June 1st. So this can't happen at our May 31st meeting. Uh, he said, is there a possibility of having a meeting sooner than your June 28th meeting? And so I'm contemplating that we, whatever date we pick for the housing production plan would be the same date as the, and we kill these two birds with one date. Does that make sense? So... What were the dates that, let me just look at the email from. Uh, well, Megan can't do the seventh, but she could do the 14th and the 21st. Yeah, June 14 or June 21. So how do those two dates 
look for people. June 14, it's good for me. On the 14th, I'll be in Spain. Okay. Oh, good for you. <laughs> Um, and the other's the 21st. Oh, and yeah, I think I'm out of town the 21st. Okay. It's um, finalizing still, but. Well, I do have a conflict on the 21st, but so do we, would we have a quorum on June 14? I'm, I'm good for either. At You're this good point. for either. I'm good so. for the 14th. You're good for the 14th, Sarah. Don's away. I'm good. I'm good for the 14th. Oh, you are? Oh, you're good for the 14th. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. You're not good for the 14th. So Judy, you're on. I can the... do I can do either. Okay. All right. As um, of now. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like we've missed somebody on either of the two dates. Um, but I'll propose. So why don't I propose to both Megan and Keith, and I guess we would do the, the tree hearing first, and then the housing production plan second on the 14th, if that works for both parties. This is just a public meeting, right? Not a, are they- It's a public, it's a public hearing for the it, tree thing. That's right, but he handles the advertising and the legal ads and all of that. Right. Okay, and pays for it. We we may need to confirm that he's doing advertising a joint meeting, but that's what he did last time. Okay, so I can do that in email. All right, so why don't everyone but Don, Don, you're not going to zoom in from Spain. <laughs> uh, I, I guess might be able to. It's probably I'm, dinner I'm time not. in Spain. <laughs> yeah, really, just about dinner time, nine o'clock, or so. Um, so, so pencil in on your calendars, a planning board extravaganza on Wednesday, June 14. I'll try Does to get that. Does this mean we from, don't have, have to meet on the 28th? It may mean we don't have to meet on the 28th, right? Why? Wouldn't that be exciting? Maybe we could set out with a deliberate intent that that's the case. We've had a lot of meetings lately. <laughs> I'm good with that. Um, we still have to have virtual cake for Tom, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're just just a round of beer. craft beer would be fine with me. Okay. All right. Treehouse. It's a All date. Right. So we could be done. Were there no minutes today? Um, You'll have them tomorrow. They're almost done. I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm glad they weren't done today. <laughs> so I think I can move to adjourn. Our next meeting would be with J.D. Ross on the 31st, right? He's he's paid the money. That's yep. been confirmed. So the hearing's good to go. Sarah? I haven't seen any bills for me to forward on a warrant is there that there are there are I'm I'm taking care of that now oh <laughs> it just it doesn't make any sense I've got to do all that for the the zoning board also and as far as what's you know there are so many for all the stuff that took place in May <laughs> uh it it just thank you for for offering to help out again but I I don't I'm going to have to have to be making the trips anyhow, so I might as well just check and see if there are any okay bills for there aren't as many bills for the for the planning board since there aren't as many hearings that need advertising. There are a Do lot. You, does someone still need a wet signature from the board? Well, no. Hmm. I, I assume they do. Okay. I, I right now have a whole stack 
of them that I have to start going through because all of them got written and submitted and advertised at the same time. And then a couple had to be repeated. Uh, I don't know why that would have changed. That seemed to have been part of the problem for the whole thing. So yeah, somebody will have to, somebody from the planning board okay. will need to sign it. Okay. Because I can go down, on, I generally am more available on Wednesdays. I work from home um, and Fridays, but that doesn't work for town hall. <laughs> um, so I can sign on Wednesdays if we get that coordinated ahead of time. I will make a note of that. I had forgotten that part of it. <laughs> And I think on a related note, Mary, we've seen a budget update, and I think the fiscal year is coming to a close. So yep. sort of a gentle reminder that oh, I need no to get reminders. Paid. I have to fit that in before the end of June. Yeah, get your expenses in. We don't want you running short again. So get it all in. Well, yeah. All right, well, then I'll go back to my motion. I move to adjourn, seeing we have no further business. I have a second. All right. <laughs> motion has been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Okay. The meeting is you... adjourned. Yeah, just out of curiosity, who's going to be there? At, Tom won't be there at town meeting. I'll be there, Judy. I'll be there. Okay. I will be there, Great. but I don't believe I can talk in that front of that big of a crowd. Okay. I can barely handle this. Okay. <laughs> you seem so, like a fearless person. So, not in that situation. It's okay. kind of like an elevator. <laughs> Okay. All right. Have a good night, everyone. See you night. next time. Night. Good night.